Hey puppy, you want to talk about salt? Okay. Hey guys, it's Jasmine and this is Puppy. And today we are going to talk about salt or sal as they say in Espanol. If it sounds like it's raining to you, that's because it is. Because we decided to take advantage of these spring showers to make sure that... Okay, well... That was a record. If you are new to this channel and interested in things like raw cat food and cat stuff in general and nutrition for cats and humans, as well as fitness and stress management techniques and a whole bunch of other fun stuff, then make sure that you click that subscribe button below because we do put out a new video every Catterday. So in today's video, we are going to talk about if salt is bad for cats because that is one of the really popular comments slash emails that I've gotten to where I thought it would be important to help educate everybody on the subject of salt and cats. So let's start by talking about the science of what salt is. Now, sodium is a natural mineral substance that plays an important role in the bodies of humans and animals. Salt, as in table salt, which is what we are referring to here and what we are consuming 90% of the time, is composed of two minerals, and those are sodium and chloride. Sodium specifically has many important functions within the body, including maintaining the balance of fluids and electrolytes, the proper function of nerves and muscle contractions, and operation of signals to and from the brain. Chloride is also essential and fundamental in the digestion process by supplying the necessary acid in the stomach, which is not only vital to help actually break down and digest the food, but also control the level of bacteria in the stomach. So although excess sodium or salt can prove toxic for cats, just like an excess of a lot of minerals can, it is still an essential part of your cat's diet. According to the report of nutrient requirements of dogs and cats from 2006, the recommended daily allowance of sodium for an adult cat weighing average size, which is considered to be around nine pounds, is 42 milligrams per day, with the minimum recommended amount being around 21 milligrams per day, according to the Journal of Nutrition. As for the chloride requirement, that's generally one and a half times the sodium requirement, since most sodium and chloride comes from salt. And by weight, salt provides one and a half times more chloride than sodium. Now, you may have noticed that salt is used in all kinds of different cat foods, not only because it's essential, but because it makes the food more palatable and it acts as a preservative. This is why dry commercial cat food, aka the worst food that you can feed your cat, is more likely to have more sodium than even wet canned commercial cat food. One, because it makes it more flavorful for your cat to eat more of it, and two, because it helps to preserve the food so that it lasts longer on the shelf. Now, if you're wondering what foods in general tend to be the highest in sodium or salt, that would typically be dry, processed, pre-packaged, and frozen meals. This can include things like smoked cured meats, baked goods, breads, frozen pizzas or burritos, cheeses, soups, and more, which hopefully you guys aren't feeding your cats any of those things, but as you may know, human nutrition is kind of my specialty, so I like to throw in some human tips for you guys in these cat stuff videos. Now, when it comes to salt toxicity in cats or hypernatremia, which is abnormally high levels of sodium in the blood, you may be surprised to learn that this can come about from things that have nothing to do with the cat's actual food. So what are some of these really easily overlooked risks that could cause salt toxicity in your cat. The first thing is salt lamps, like those Himalayan salt lamps, the really cool looking salt rock orangish pinkish lamps that you might light up in your house because they make the energy better and simply look cool and whatever reason you may have for owning one. Many cats seem to be attracted to these salt lamps and lick them like they're a cow licking a salt lick. So if you do have one of these lamps, 
Try to keep it covered or put away unless you're using it so that you can make sure your cat isn't making a toxic lollipop out of your really cool decor. The second easily overlooked household risk for salt toxicity in your cat would be water from a salt water aquarium. I'll be honest with you guys, I've never had more than a little beta fish tank, so I've never had a big fancy aquarium. I don't know if fresh water or salt water or whatever kind of water is most common, but I have heard of this happening and I do know that a lot of people use salt water in their household aquariums. And it's probably needless to say that your cat is attracted to the fish in that aquarium potentially. So if your fur baby even sticks his or her paw in the aquarium to play with the fish, but then proceeds to lick and clean him or herself later, that is potential risk for ingesting too much salt from the salt water. The third thing is modeling clay. So if you are a crafty person and like to make things out of modeling clay or have a little studio in your house, you definitely want to make sure to monitor it if you bring it out into a public space in the house where your cat can jump on a table and potentially lick and eat it. Or if you have a separate room or closet with those types of things, always make sure to have it shut because that is another potential way that your cat can ingest too much salt. The fourth thing that kind of goes hand in hand with the modeling clay is salt dough that's often used to make things like Christmas ornaments where you take your cat's paw and press it into the salt dough so that it leaves a little paw imprint, which is not the best news to hear because you know that people who do things like that are awesome cat parent house lion mothers and fathers that just take the time to make a Christmas ornament out of their cat's paw. But again, you wanna be really cautious of this because once your cat goes to clean up and lick himself or herself, then they could potentially ingest that salt again. And the last thing you wanna be careful of to avoid your cat getting salt toxicity is if you live in a place where it snows in the winter or any time of year and you use rock salts on your driveway or on your walkway and you have an indoor outdoor cat because those rock salts, as you may already know if you have a cat, will get stuck on his or her little furry toe beans and paws or even fur in general. And again, our cats are cleanly little creatures, so they will go ahead to clean themselves and potentially ingest all of that heavy, heavy rock salt. Now, some of these things, I mean, you're not gonna be like a helicopter cat parent. So the best you can do is just Try and be cautious, be aware of these things, because if you see symptoms, you'll know what their potential cause was. And knowing that these things are potential hazards, if you do have them around, can help you more quickly identify if your cat is suffering from salt toxicity. So what are the symptoms if your cat does get excess sodium into his or her system? These include increased thirst, confusion or disorientation, seizures, and even coma, which the coma is pretty rare to happen from salt toxicity. And a lot of these symptoms are common to symptoms of toxicity of anything like flowers or other household items when it comes to your cat, but it is important to keep an eye out. You may also notice things like vomiting, diarrhea, or excessive urination, though those things are more common in cats who have struggled with diabetes. Now, as for why we use light salt specifically in the raw food diet recipe that is on catladyfitness.com, and if the same daily requirements apply, or if anything is different, if your cat struggles with CKD or chronic kidney disease, there will be videos out about those specific questions and more in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you click the subscribe button and the little bell icon right next to it to get notified of when those videos are up. And of course, look who decides to join us as we finish up today's video. Say hello, puppy. Gosh, so camera shy. Now I'm curious to learn if you guys think that your cats have ever potentially gotten salt toxicity from something, whether it's the rock salts from the snow or a saltwater aquarium. So make sure to let me know in the comments below because you know I love to hear what you guys have to say and get the discussion going. Also, if there's anything else you can think of besides the handful of things that I mentioned to help other cat owners and moms and dads be more aware of the things they might have in their house just in case they feel like their cat is acting kind of funny. All right, you guys, I hope you liked today's video. If you found it helpful or interesting, 
please make sure to click the thumbs up below because that helps me know the content you like to see and it also helps more people potentially get this helpful information to take better care of their furry house lions. Remember to check out our cat stuff playlist, which I will link in the comment below and in that little eye icon right up there because that's where we have tons and tons of videos about all things cat stuff. We hope you guys enjoyed the more soothing rain sounds up until this point of this video and thank you so much for watching. We are gonna go inside where it's nice and dry and we will see you next week. Bye.